Hey, what's up guys? Mike Red Fox. In this video, we're going to talk about the five things I wish I did differently when I started crypto mining. So this video is really sparked by a conversation that I was having in my Discord. By the way, if you're not in there, link is in the description below. And I was talking to somebody over direct messaging and they were looking to get into GPU mining for the first time. They were just asking some really great questions along the lines of, you know, things that I wish I did differently so they could get off to a better start than I did and avoid some of my mistakes that I made. So I thought, what the hell? Let's throw a video out and talk about some of those things in the hope that you avoid some of these mistakes. Either you're just curious about crypto mining, you're just getting started with GPU mining, or maybe you're somebody who's been in this space for a little while. Here, in no particular order at all, are the five things that I wish I did differently when I started mining cryptocurrency. So the first thing that I wish I did differently is I wish I didn't mine a bunch of terrible altcoins, a bunch of shit coins. When you really look back, coming off of the 2017-2018 bull run, everybody, myself included, was just looking for the next big thing. We just saw what Ethereum could do for GPU miners, and we're looking for the next project that's really going to take off. And so we're scouring Bitcoin talk forums, looking at the altcoin announcements, trying to investigate projects to find one that had some promise in the proof of workspace. We would then put our GPUs on it, mine a bunch of it in the hopes that we can then sell it later if it got listed on a really big exchange and give ourselves a really great payday. Guess what? Almost all of that didn't happen. It was a big waste of hash power, big waste of electricity, mining a bunch of these cryptocurrencies that never went anywhere or wind up being scams in the end. So for me, I wish I just stuck with the big guys. And at the time, that would have been Ethereum amongst a couple others instead of taking the big risk and mining some of these terrible altcoins. Now, don't get me wrong. There were some great projects that came out of that time that I am glad I got into. Ravencoin is one and Zellcash slash Flux is the other. But the 95% of them were just a complete waste. I would love to hear from you, by the way, if you've been in this space for a little while. What are some terrible altcoins that you mined over the last few years. I would I would just love to hear from you in the comment section. All right, the second thing that I wish I did differently in my time in crypto mining is I wish that I tracked all my mining income, all my expenses from GPU to electricity from the start. Here where I'm from the US, I have to report all of this stuff on my taxes. And so that first year, it became a mad scramble to go back, look at old wallets, look at exchanges that sometimes didn't even exist anymore to track my trades, track my mining income and get all of that together for Uncle Sam. And man, I wish that I did all of that from the start because what wound up happening is I spent probably a month just combing through everything and getting receipts and, and mining history and all that together in one place. And that one place wound up being cointracking.info. I love this website. I've been using it for taxes ever since. I have a referral link down below if you wouldn't mind using it if you're looking for something. But what up, what up happening out of all that is I figured out a way to make a lot of this automatic from me. So what I do is I mine to Ethermine and it pays out to Coinbase. And then I have Coinbase API set up on cointrackingint.info, which then imports all my transactions directly to it. So by the time it comes tax season, everything's already there. And it's a simple export to TurboTax to get everything reported to the IRS. Now, there, of course, are some things I need to take care of manually. And what I do now is I keep up with that throughout the year. So it's not just a big scramble at the end of the year. So for you, please, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet or anything, just keep track of all of this stuff from the start. If you're in an area that needs to report this stuff for taxes, and even if you're not, it's just a really great way to look at where your break even is, where your ROI is, and how much you've invested over time in GPU mining. All right, the third thing that I wish I did differently in my time in mining is I wish that I stocked up on more mining essentials and components during the last bear market. I'm talking frames, motherboards, and processors. You guys know if you've been in mining for the last year, all those prices are insane right now. You're talking $300. For a motherboard, you're talking $100, two, three hundred dollars at its height. For frames and processors are just really hard to come by. The really cheap ones that you used to be able to get for almost nothing before. 
So I, I certainly did stock up on some of them, but it really just wasn't enough. I mean, I bought, you know, ASRock H110 mining mobos for uh, $30 a piece brand new. I bought Celeron processors, $30 a piece brand new. And I bought frames, $30, $40 a piece brand new. But it just wasn't enough. And I wish I had bought more because what wound up happening is I had to spend a little more than I wanted to or find alternative solutions during this last bull run in mining. And just I wish as if I could go back in time, I would just stock up on more of those essentials than I thought I would need. And really, it's not only for building new rigs, but also what if your processor goes bad? What if you short out a motherboard or something like that happens? Having a back stock of this stuff so you can just swap it out and get back up and mining again, I think is a really smart approach. And for me, if I would have just put a couple hundred dollars more to, into it during the last bear market, I think I would have just came out ahead and ultimately it wasn't a big risk to throw just a little bit more money into getting the core components that I would need later down the line. Okay, the fourth thing that I wish I did differently in my time in crypto mining is I wish that I understood really foundationally all the electrical needs of my rigs. And what I mean by that is not only, you know, can I run a riser off SATA? No, you can't, by the way. But how much can Molex carry? How much can PCIe carry? Can I split the load on a single PCIe strand to power, you know, multiple GPUs, multiple risers? Not only that, but like, what can I run off a 15 amp circuit versus a 20 amp versus a 30 amp? Like all of those things, I just didn't take the time to get a foundational knowledge of. And actually, it's one of my proudest YouTube videos that I ever put up. And it was early in my YouTube career. I'll link to it up in the card here is how to power GPU mining risers safely. And for me, that's where a lot of my foundational knowledge started. And that was so helpful for me as I built more rigs with more power hungry cards as time went on. In those early days, you know, I'm just looking at where my circuits in my house are, trying to run rigs to balance out the load. I'm tricking, tripping circuit breakers in my panel. I melted a uh, smart switch. I, you know, just all these things happen that if I just had a really good idea of what my rigs power needs were and what my circuits, whether they're the circuits out of your power supply or the circuits in the house, your house wall, what they could handle. So going back, I wish I had that foundational knowledge from the start instead of learning it a little too late in my mining career. Okay, the last thing, the fifth thing that I wish I did differently in my time in mining was I wish I had a plan to get all of this heat in one place and exhausted from my house. You know, when I started, I had a six card rig up in my office upstairs and it just got so hot in there in the summer that the paint wound up softening on the walls. It was ridiculous. You couldn't even sit in the room. So I moved it down here to the basement. I wound up building another rig. Then the summer came again. And what happens is all that heat is rising to upstairs. It's getting hot up there. So my AC is just working overtime. My electricity bill is insane from that air conditioning running. And at that moment, I was like, I got to do something because this is ridiculous. And I wound up figuring out the grow tent setup, right? And you can look back at some of my older videos. I'm on version two now, but that has been the solution for me in my house to get all this heat in one place and get it sent out. Keeps the GPUs cool, but more importantly, keeps where I live cool. And it doesn't cause my air conditioning to work overtime. And I highly recommend it, whether you're in an apartment, a condo, a bedroom, or house. It's a really great way to get all that heat in one place and then send it out of your house to keep your living space wherever you are, nice and cool. So I wish that I had a plan for that early on instead of scrambling to figure it out when I needed to the most. So that's it, guys. Those are the five things that I wish I did differently in my time in crypto mining. I would love to hear from you in the comments section. Do any of these things ring true for you? What's a terrible <laughs> alternative cryptocurrency that you mined in the last few years? Is there anything else that I didn't put on my list that you wish you knew in the start? Leave it in the comment section down below. I'm sure the community would love to hear from you, and I definitely would love to hear from you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe for more content. Hit the notification bell so you know when I do live streams. Join my Discord if you'd like to chat. Link is in the description below. And as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I will see you in the next video.